In a recent video, I detailed my initial experiences with an Atari ST and the numerous faults I encountered with it. One of them was this SF354 floppy drive not working. I couldn't get it to spin a cleaning disk and it wasn't being recognized by the computer. It turned out that it likely has a belt in it, so I decided that it should just be taken apart and given a thorough look. So today, we're going to replace the belt and solve the problem of why it's not showing up on the computer. Okay, so looking at this, we've got uh, eight visible screws on the bottom, um, but these four are right underneath of the floppy drive. So I'm going to guess those are holding the drive down into the case. So I will need to take those out, but I should take out the four outermost ones first to just get the case open. Hmm, interesting. So it's hooked through the front. Maybe I should try and loosen those. I didn't really want the drive loose, knocking around inside unmanaged, but that might be required to finesse it through the front hole. All right, well, at least gets that out of the way. Ah, looks like probably gonna have to pull up that circuit board before I can get to it. Is that a full height floppy drive? Wow, that's strange. It looks like there's just one screw holding this in. Yep. Looks like nothing too fancy going on there. And uh, this is where all the magic is. So we got the stupid twist on magnetic shield. I'm going to have to undo that. Oh, there's the belt. And yeah, it's goo. Try to avoid squishing it too much. It hasn't gone full liquid yet. So it's still kind of manageable definitely falling apart though don't want it to uh, potentially smear up my blue mat now i regret having done this here um but yeah there we go that's the majority of it off of there and then i guess that's the motor no that's just a screw where's the motor at it shouldn't be hard to find. Oh, it's way back here. Wow. That belt goes a long way. That's a lot gooier there. Okay, I'm going to call that good enough for right now. Um, now, unfortunately, that was a flat belt. I don't have any flat belts on hand. Um, not sure what I'm going to do about that. I have a handful of belts here. I'm going to see if I can get anything to fit, um, even if it's not right, just even just a square belt for now. That might work. It's staying on. Um, it wants to ride, looks like right about the middle of the uh, flywheel. So maybe that'll do it. I don't know. Uh, that belt path, man. Uh, why? <laughs> That's so stupid. It goes right over the circuit board. If you had one of these stored upside down and that belt went all the way bad, th that thing is going to be toast. Um, but yeah, I guess try this out. Um, one thing, I'm not thrilled about seeing that on there. So I'm going to bend this out slightly and hope that it doesn't push against the flywheel because uh, I have a suspicion that that could slow it down. And I'm just going to bend these a little here. I can unbend them if I need to. Uh, I can try this without putting the whole case back together, so I think I'm going to do that. 
Okay, standalone power test doesn't seem to do anything. So, uh, yeah, we'll need the whole computer. Okay, let's see if anything changes here. Um, yeah, on is to the outside. All right. I'm going to do the cleaning disc first still. Isopropanol is probably worn off of it, but, uh, or evaporated, but just give it a go anyway. That's a lot more promising sounding. Okay, hopefully that was it just giving up, not the uh, band falling off. That was the band falling off. Awesome. Yeah, none of my uh, belts are going to work for this, so I'm going to attempt to measure this in order one. Um, but I'm going to order a kit. Um, it doesn't really matter what I measure here. There's one kit on Amazon, and that's where I'm going to buy it, and I'm pretty sure it's going to have it. Um, I do need to know what the width is, and I just measured that of what was left of the belts, and it's one-tenth of an inch. Um, so it's going to be 2.5 millimeters. So um, let me look. The depth of the uh, flywheel is approximately 5 millimeters there um, on the lip, maybe 4. Um, and then the thing over here is about the same uh so there's a three millimeter belt kit and i'm probably gonna get that um go with that um but let's see what the length is approximately um around the flywheel all right around the pulley it's probably getting marked up by the uh stuff anyway but just do it to be sure okay here and there, okay. Length is approximately 130 millimeters. So, okay. The kits are up to 140, so that's getting a little precise on what's probably the sloppy end, but hopefully just getting a flat belt of approximately the right size will be good. Well, when it rains, it pours. Um, it's looking like the power supply for the floppy drive is probably bad um if i measure the 12 volt output going to the floppy drive here with the power supply on we will eventually get a healthy 12 volts there we go but if i measure the 5 volt output we will get nothing so the chips on here are probably not being powered because they're likely five volts and i was attempting to set up a go tech in lieu of the floppy drive missing the belt so yeah i need to uh come up with a solution for the power supply now because <laughs> that's not working the mystery deepens because uh, if I check the power supply here, we can see uh, I will have 12 volts coming in there, but I also have 5 volts coming in, so the power supply is actually fine. Um, interesting, though, over here is the switch. So, okay, here, no 12 volt. Switch. 12 volt. All right. 5 volt. No 5 volt switch and no five volt so the power switch is actually what has failed on this uh it's no longer making contact on the lower ones in here um and uh that is what's causing my issue so what i need to do is i need to get in here and well i don't know uh can i deoxid this and potentially fix it or is it just going to be beyond hope all right, it's time for some progress here. Aha! Uh, five volts is now making its way through. So I did not solder bridge the uh, switch. Um, what I did was a little different. Let me take this apart and show you. Okay, now when you have a switch like this, there are multiple parts to this. Um, and the one that we're looking at here is this plastic rocker, the actual part that the humans will touch. Now, this part is interchangeable by the manufacturer to change the color that's exposed to the end user. And they do this by designing a single switch mechanism in here and then having the rocker be a replaceable part. So if you get underneath of here, you can actually release this. There we are. 
So with that removed, we can see the actual switch here. And this is even a little more complicated uh, than it looks. Now the switch here is metal inside and it's sort of a ball joint and it can be manually pushed and actuated like that. But it can also be pushed in. And when you push it in, there'll be a little tiny gap that forms around it. And that is how I wicked some deoxid into the actual switch uh, mechanism area. And then I actuated it a bunch of times to clean it out. Because the only way into this elsewise is to peel off those little tabs there on the back. But this shroud that is soldered in place uh, would have to be removed as well. So it's really not an easy proposition. So pushing that down and then slowly feeding a little bit of deoxid in is about the best way to go. Uh, that actually did sort of fix it. Now I say sort of fix it because if this was a uh, mains AC switch and there is no way I would accept that solution, I would be replacing that with something uh, new because I don't want to cause a fire because there is likely higher resistance than intended in that switch. But this switch itself is actually only rated for nine volts AC at three amps or five volts DC at 4.5 amps. So this is already a pretty low voltage switch and I know it's coming into it. This is five and 12 volts just to run this logic and the floppy drive, which I'm going to be using at GoTech for uh, temporarily. So it's really not going to be that bad on the switch and I don't have to worry about it. And it is working now so I can use it. All right, now I'm still not 100% sure I have this set up correctly. I don't know why it's flashing zero and 137 at me. Well, error 31 is a uh, frequent search. Okay, disk full 31 bad image file. Okay. Well, well that seemed to have worked to me. Um, all right, it's been a few days here. I haven't had a chance to try and sort out the flash floppy stuff, but the belts did get in. So I'm going to see if I have one now that is an appropriate size for this. And it looks like I probably, maybe this first one I picked up will actually work. Um, let's just go ahead and see. Uh, yeah, so I should definitely have one that'll work because um, that one worked. I um, need to get it down onto the pulley there. Come on. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I should be able to get this drive working now. Yeah, there we go. Not riding up anymore. Okay, let's put the drive back together and see if that works. Really wasn't looking to have to make a... Uh, repair video on the ST, but uh, it's apparently what I'm doing anyway. So let's uh, see if this drive works now. Uh, it's been a while since I flipped the switch, so it's possible the five volt rail won't come on immediately, but we'll see. This should last a while and then uh, finally boot. Ah, there's a light. So there is life. So okay then. Okay, it is still showing floppy disk A and B, which I don't really like. I don't know why it's showing two. Um, I would like to run a cleaning disk through this still. Come on. Ah, there we go. Yeah, that definitely sounds like it's going. Okay, that's probably good. Let's see what happens. Oh, awesome. The floppy drive is working. Oh, that's nice. Okay. That was very relieving to see that the drive could be repaired and it wasn't too bad to do. Although the rest of the computer started to uh, give me more issues and I will have to resolve those later. But for now, I hope that was helpful to anyone with one of these floppy drives. I think the stupid single-sided drive is the only one that has a belt, so this likely won't be an issue for too many of you, but that same switch is probably used on the double-sided drives and might be a likely culprit. 
If you enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe because I will absolutely be having more Atari ST repair videos come up soon as I still need to fix my monitor, my mouse, make a joystick adapter, and uh, come up with some way of connecting a floppy drive. So I have many things planned. If you want to support the channel and those future Atari ST endeavors, I am on Patreon. But for now, that's it, and I'll see you next time.